it was a little different, a uh, different atmosphere, different arena, a whole different fans that really don't get to see us play that often. So it was good, just something new. You know? Kata Bates D up on the Spurs put on a show for the crowd in Austin and Big Board Sports. Right before tip off last night, the Spurs turned out the lights at the Moody Center, and that's when fans went crazy using their cell phone lights and moving their phones up and down to the beat of the music. After that, the Spurs and Blazers played a heck of a game that featured 11 ties, six lead changes, and both teams led by as many as nine. Kata Bates D up led the Spurs of 25, and after the game, Pop had this to say about KBD. He's carving out an NBA career. You know, from the beginning, it didn't look like that. Uh, but he's he's worked on his skills, his confidence, his aggressiveness, everything. Really proud of him. That makes me feel great. He's been on me since I've been here. Just he kind of sees the potential in me, and I've gotten better and better each year. Um, I'm, I'm glad that the greatest coach you know says that about me. Um, that gives me like, he gives me a lot of confidence. Like how can I not be confident in my game and my my hard work, if he's saying stuff like that. Spurs leading scorer Kelvin Johnson did not attend shoot around yesterday morning at the Moody Center. Spurs PR staff told us he was dealing with stomach issues and that he really wanted to play. Then during Pop's pregame presser, he told us Kelvin was throwing up all night long and that he really wanted to play. Kelvin did go and he scored 24 points in 32 minutes. During post, we asked him what happened. Yeah, I, I think I got food poisoning a little bit. I, I missed uh, shooting around this morning. I wasn't feeling too good, but... Um, you know, we down guys, and, you know, this, this is my job. This is what I love to do. So, you know, um, just prepared and, and got, ready, got, got ready for the night. Stop their buckies. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If, if, if our strength coach hit this, he's going to cuss me out. But. <laughs> He's not supposed to eat Bucky. Spurs have one more game in Austin tomorrow at three versus the T-Wolves. Tough conditions at Comalander Stadium this afternoon for the UAL Class 6A Girls Soccer Regional Final. O'Connor taking on Round Rock Westwood. Panthers have a great opportunity in the sixth minute. Ariana Martinez puts a shot on goal, but goalkeeper Atlee Olofsson is there for the stop. Play is then halted in the 11th minute for an hour and 45 minute lightning delay. Play resumed around 3 o'clock and Westwood broke through early in the second half off a deflection. Mia Wiley buries her shot in the back of the net. That's the only goal of the match. O'Connor falls. 1-0. In the second semi, Taft taken on Round Rock. No score until early in the second half. Julissa Gonzalez's shot is denied, but the ball deflects right to Jordan Matthews for a 1-0 Raiders lead. Round Rock would equalize moments later. Now this game is still in action, and the match is tied at one all. Yesterday was a big day at Legacy Traditional School Lee Academy, where they celebrated five college-bound athletes on signing day. Dion Manuel will play football and further his education in Sterling College. Matan Matan is heading to Barclays College for cross country. He's the first student in school history to earn a scholarship for cross country. Jay Patino put pen to paper to attend Barclay College where he will play basketball at the next level. Basketball player Diamond Henderson was all smiles because she's going to Manhattan Christian College and Alton Luckenbill will take his basketball skills to Barclay College. Congratulations to all on a job well done. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yep. Big honors. All right. Thanks, Larry. By the way, coming up, we're gonna talk weekend. Oh yeah, yeah a Puro case at Q and A. Did you? <laughs> Larry's excited. Heck yeah. Yes, it is Easter weekend. There is so much going on this weekend and in the days ahead. So we have our favorite Friday guest to talk about all of it with us, what? Stephanie Guerra. Yay! Local influencer. Wow. <laughs> You may be the only <laughs> guest that like Adam and Larry cheer for. I don't in studio. I didn't even wow, have to pay them. Nice. But Adam did give me his Fiesta medal. Just saying. It is a very yeah, cool. That's medal. a perk. Yeah, yeah, it is a cool one. All right, so we're going to talk about bikes. Yes. Right off the top. So Saturday there is a Fiesta bike parade at Mission County Park. It's put on by San Antonio, Texas Social Ride. I love this group. They do all kinds of rides throughout the city every week. This one is actually going to ride through the south side, starting at Mission County Park. So it's kind of like a pre-kickoff to Fiesta. They're a great group. You can go um, meet people, go with your friends, family, people of all ages. It's a really great opportunity to connect if you love 
by grading. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about Fiesta things already. <laughs> it's almost that time. Yes, it is. We've got uh, also something coming up that's really cool if you're into art, murals, which we're seeing more and more of in San Antonio, San Pedro Creek Culture Park Artist Talks and yes. Mural Unveiling. Yes, so the San Antonio River Foundation is hosting an event at San Pedro Creek Culture Park um, with the Art of Four. So it's featuring Tyson Davis and Jocelyn Van Taylor. It's going to be an amazing um, panel um, that will teach you about all of the w new works that they're bringing to San Pedro Creek Culture Park since it's expanding, okay. um, you know, all through downtown. So it's going to be a really, really neat opportunity to learn more about the artists that actually had a collaborative art program for this piece um, and then find out more about what's coming for San Pedro Creek. Because there's already great stuff that's yeah. down yes. there. I yeah. mean, the murals are beautiful. It's there's really statues pretty. down there. I mean, if you haven't gone to San Pedro Creek yet, it's always a great place to go. Yeah, I will add for all of the events this weekend, definitely keep an eye on the weather tomorrow because a lot of them are outdoors. Well, but as far as I know, everything is still on with the art talks. I have a source telling yeah, me that overnight know. it's going to stop and it'll dry out this weekend. Yeah, tomorrow morning That's one of our, work he made. Did you pay him to you say may that? Or, you may or may not have his medal, let me just say that. <laughs> all right, so we've got an Easter egg hunt. Everybody loves an Easter egg hunt. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and obviously it's Easter weekend, Good Friday today, Easter Sunday. Um, I have a favorite place out in Holotus called Joe Sabi's. They've gone um, from music venue to event space. They're hosting this huge golden Easter egg hunt tomorrow. And they're going to have music, food, games, and hundreds of prizes. If you look up the event on Joe Sabi's website and Facebook, they have hundreds of prizes for tomorrow. But it's fun for adults and kids. So the adults will have an Easter egg hunt also. It just makes you want to yell, Joe Sabi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe if you're planning something past this weekend, we've got an event for people who like podcasts yes. and Mexican-American history. Yes, so um, we actually have uh, MACRI, which is the Mexican-American Civil Rights History Institute, put, uh, hosting a talk next week called Podcasting Mexican-American Rights. I want to make sure I get everybody's name right. Jack Herrera from White Hats, he's with Texas Monthly. Eva Ruth, who used to be here in San Antonio, yeah. now hosts Chicano Squad podcast, and Laura Pena with Valle del Sueno. So they're all gonna be talking about their individual podcasts and how it's so important that we document and talk about Mexican-American history and civil rights on podcasts and multimedia platforms. Absolutely. And that is actually virtual and online, so everybody can attend. You oh, could probably wonderful. find some new podcasts to dive into there yes. as well. All right, so now we're talking cocktails and conversation. <laughs> you had my attention. Yes. That sounds so fancy. I know. It, I feel like this is like a, a nice way to have cocktails and conversation and learn about downtown. So okay. this is actually hosted by Center City at Legacy Park next right. to the Frost Bank Tower. And the conversation is around what moves downtown, development, people, or both. So obviously we all talk about this a lot. Is you know, the people behind the scenes that make downtown, they will have guests, Elizabeth Burtz from Centro, Caitlin Jones from the 8020 Foundation, and David Robinson Jr. from Weston Urban, talking about how we all need to be a part of the conversation. Um, and it's a great event to attend. Tickets are actually on sale right now and the early bird, early bird pricing ends tonight. So if anybody's interested in going, I suggest buying the tickets now, but I'll be there. I'm 100% about developing downtown yes. in the right way and making sure that we all have a voice on how our downtown is going to look. I like so Legacy Park, too. I, I mean, And it's not park. just because Pinkerton's Barbecue is right there. <laughs> I like the park. It's got an urban feel, but it's like green space. Yes. You got the Frost Tower. You got the new city building there. Pinkerton's. I mean, it's yeah. just a great It's park. a beautiful downtown park, and there is parking. So you just got to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love the feel. They have so many events at Legacy Park. We yeah. just went to um, our sidecar launch with our friends. Yes. They have a dog market, all kinds of things there. It's really beautiful to have in downtown. Yeah, and you can smell barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second Thursdays are back at a really awesome spot in San Antonio. Um, yes, yeah, so the McNay hosts their second Thursdays event. Um, they usually bring it back spring to summer, fall time when the weather's a little nicer. I'm excited for this Thursday because they're having the Conjunto legend Eva Ibarra. So she is an, an accordion player. She is legendary. She's from here in San Antonio. She's performing Thursday night. It's free. It's family friendly. There's food, drinks, music, and you get to see the art exhibits also, but it's out on the lawn for everybody to enjoy. 
It's going to be a good kickoff to Fiesta, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see your picks for Fiesta time. Ooh. I mean, how do you choose? It's very overwhelming. There's so many. But, but this, is what, this is what I love, Stephanie. I love the <laughs> fact that you find those gems that maybe don't get as much attention mm -hmm. as some of the other things. And so I, appreciate I really that. appreciate that that's what you bring to our broadcast. Like these are things that are going on. Yeah, we know. keep it Budo, right? Yeah. We keep that, it well, Budo. We talk about name. the local love and making sure that everybody gets a chance to get featured. I want to say thank you to everybody who tags me or sends me their events every week so yes. they can oh, be featured yeah. on Case Head yes. on the weekends. Love it. Uh, we're really appreciative. And then I just want to say hello also to my family and friends that always watch every week so sorry to miss last week but i'm glad to be back hi family and we'll friends see soon. Oh. did we yeah. did we say um your account yet because i want to make sure we get our rhyme in there it no. rhymes, with it puro, rhymes with flinche puro flinche yeah, yeah. Well, Thank you. that's not what it is but it rhymes, rhymes with, with. we can't say always that. more events on there but i love being on here to talk to them talk to y'all about them thank, thank you very much and yeah. happy belated Steph. happy belated birthday thank you way, so. <laughs> all right we'll be right back New signs the labor market is cooling down. The March jobs report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics is the first in 12 months to come in below expectations. Ivan Rodriguez breaking down the numbers and what they mean for the Fed's year-long campaign to chill inflation. U.S. employers added 236,000 jobs in March, coming in below expectations, a labor market cool down that could actually be a good sign. The Fed isn't going to publicly say we want job losses, but I think the Fed knows and all the economists know, are there that know that if the, infl if the unemployment rate stays at 3.5%, you're not likely to uh, calm or tame inflation. Industries like leisure and hospitality, healthcare and government continue to lead the way in job gains. The job losses are coming from sectors like manufacturing and construction. Still, the labor market has remained stubbornly resilient. The unemployment rate dropped to 3.5 percent. Average hourly earnings grew 0.3 percent from the month before. And the cool down in hiring may not be enough to stop the Federal Reserve from raising interest rates again next month. Inflation is extremely high and it's hurting the working people of this country badly. And we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. The Fed is aiming to engineer a soft landing for inflation, but it's a difficult tightrope to walk. My guess is that the process of bringing down inflation will bring on a recession at uh, some stage as it almost always has in the past. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Nice to see the rain, but now everybody wondering about the holiday weekend ahead, Adam. Yes, and we're going to gradually dry out. So we're talking about all those outdoor events, right, that's, that are going on across town and everybody's just family and friend events. We're going to gradually dry out. Outdoor events will be A-OK, -okay. no problems. Just it's going to be a slow process. Let's talk temperatures. 54, our high temperature today. If we do not warm up another degree, then today will be tied for the coldest high temperature for this date. So that puts it in perspective. That's record tying territory. And all across our area, we were in the 50s today, except Del Rio made it up to 60 degrees. Outside right now, well, 54 degrees and some dampness out there, a few sprinkles even around parts of San Antonio. We'll take a look at the radar in a bit. Notice temperature not changing much, just down near 50 by early tomorrow morning. Talk about how much we warm up and you know, our next chance of rain right around the corner. A 12 hour long standoff ends with no one in custody. SAPD entered the home only to find the suspect wasn't inside. Police say he was connected to the shooting death of a 33 year old woman. The three migrants found dead among 24 trapped inside multiple train cars in Del Rio. According to US Border Patrol, 15 of them were in serious need of medical attention. It comes just two weeks after migrants were found in train cars in Canipa and Eagle Pass. Thousands of people in San Antonio taking part in an Easter tradition today. The Passion Play recreates the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The San Antonio Passion Play has been happening annually since 1983. People taking part in another tradition, Easter camping. Despite the rain, many people still camping out at parks ahead of the holiday weekend. You can find more of these stories and more in general right now on KSAT.com. And that's your 60 second recap and things looking a little bit better in terms of the weather for Easter campers and anybody who's got outdoor plans this weekend.
Yeah, it's still going to be damp out there tonight for camping out, but it's not going to be a continuous rain and not heavy at all. Just that very light sprinkly action and even some drizzle and fog developing as well. So gradual drying tomorrow. It's going to be warmer this weekend, but we'll still be below average for this time of year and low humidity. That's the nice thing. You know, so often around Easter, it's hot, it's sticky, it's sweaty, but that's not going to be the case at all and it's going to be more comfortable than what we've had lately with two days in the 50s tomorrow we're at 68 and then low 70s by easter sunday and that's going to last into next week as well let's talk about uh, rainfall of course we've got more light rain on the way but it's not going to really add up to anything more than say a few hundredths of an inch or a tenth of an inch here and there we're looking at the very light rainfall activity look at the totals i just updated the the one in the middle there san antonio international airport 1.66 inches over the past 72 hours so a good healthy rain didn't come all at once we spread it out a good light soaking everything's going to be nice and green when that sun comes out and colorful Kennedy, nearly five inches. Gonzalez, almost four and a half inches of rain. Tilden, these are rain gauge measurements. Earlier in the newscast, I showed you the Doppler radar estimates. These are actual measurements. Converse, 2.19. Floresville, 2.73. And New Braunfels, 1.55. Thunderstorm off to the west right now. This is in northwestern Edwards County, just moved in from Valverde County. There's still a little bit of energy out there in some spots that can kickstart a few of those showers and storms, but very isolated and really it's the exception opposed to the norm. Even the heavier activity we had closer to the coast, that's all moved out of our area. It's out of Hallettsville, it's out of Quero, it's out of Victoria and Goliad, and we just have lingering leftover very light rain. See these very light green returns? It's almost hard to see uh, that's the type of rain that we're dealing with and that's the kind of rain I think we'll have come and go periodically through the night and sunrise tomorrow. Even on the south side we got a little bit of that that just popped up. I noticed this on the radar near the missions and just uh, paralleling I-37 there. A few light sprinkles but nothing to make you run indoors or seek shelter really quickly and no lightning expected around town. All right temperatures. 54. That was our high today. Look at the average of 79. It's going to be a few days till we get back up to that average. And today, since midnight, we've had exactly half an inch of rain at the airport. 54 right now, north wind at 9. The wind is going to stay out of the north for several days, meaning what I mean by that is we're not going to see a return to mugginess anytime soon. So that north wind is not going to switch around from the Gulf of Mexico. So dew points are going to stay in that 50 degree range for several more days and you're not going to notice any stickiness or mugginess in the air. Del Rio now at 60. Eagle Pass 59, Catula 60. Those are the warmest temperatures so often this time of year and even just days past. I've been pointing out triple digits and 90s off to the west where it's typically warmer. Far from that right now, unseasonably cool air. Quite often we'd be in the mid, -up, mid upper 70s at least around San Antonio. We're at 54 degrees. New Braunfels is 55, Bernie at 52, Stinson Airport on the south side at 56 and Seguin now at 53. And temperatures not falling much near 50 in the morning. Some sprinkles coming and going. Also some drizzle and fog, so dampness. And yes, we will dry out tomorrow, but it'll be a gradual process. I'm smoking a brisket tomorrow. Good weather for smoking a brisket. And I'm throwing some chicken breasts on as well. I got to do that, I guess, as well. Anyway, good weather for it. We'll have some sun, but not a whole lot. I think so we'll see some welcomed breaks in the clouds. 68, the high temperature. And then we get into Easter Sunday in the morning. It's still going to be comfortably cool. But tomorrow afternoon, all across the board, we're looking at upper 60s, a few locations near 70. 55 Sunday morning. 73 into the afternoon. You don't have to worry about sweating through your Sunday nice clothes. It's going to be just fine with a little bit of sunshine from time to time and low humidity as well. And then notice as we get into next week, Monday, a few scattered showers and storms, probably nothing like what we just had the past few days. Otherwise sunny next week and in the 70s. We can enjoy that beautiful, comfortable weather guilt free after this rain. It's the way he says brisket. brisket. Mm. Oh, baby. I thought maybe it was like brisket. The brisk weather followed by <laughs> no, no, it's his weekend plan. Okay, all right. The buzz <laughs> is up next.
In the buzz today, egg prices have stabilized somewhat since their January highs, but they're still not cheap. And that has led some people on social media to try something interesting, painting potatoes for Easter. The trend hasn't been lost on potato producers. Yeah, these are potatoes. I had to look at them a couple of times ago. Those aren't eggs. All right, Marketing and Promotion Board Potatoes USA pushing this idea. It's offering tips on how to get the best Easter spud. You can either use food coloring or regular paint. The group says potatoes are less fragile than eggs and easier for kids to hold. I'm just imagining I, a, a bunch no. of a bunch of like Mr. Potato Heads for Easter, you know, in their Sunday best. You know, Easter spuds. Easter spuds. Dud. I'm not. Kasky says paint rocks if yeah, you don't want to do it. I, I agree with Adam. All right, troopers in Minnesota made an Easter rescue this week. Two officers found this rabbit on the side of the highway near Mankato. They believe it's someone's pet, but it's still a mystery how it got on the side of the road. Yeah, it's Mankato, by the way. I know, I heard my Minnesota I know, yeah. buddy. The troopers correct. took him to a local humane <laughs> society, checked him out. They sent him to a bunny rescue. Workers there are currently trying to find this little guy's owners. In Mankato in Mankato. <laughs> An exceedingly rare ruby coming to auction and it could sell for a whopping $30 million. The 55.22 carat ruby will be the largest and most valuable ruby ever featured according to Sotheby's. The gem was found in a Mozambique mine originally weighing in at 101 carats. That is crazy. Record gemstone sales are usually dominated by colored diamonds, but this ruby is said to have a, quote, outstanding clarity that results in vivid red hues. The ruby will be featured in Sotheby's Magnificent Jewels collection in June. So spend 30 million or maybe just paint a potato <laughs> red. Paint a potato. Yeah, option B for me. Yeah. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching the news at 6. See you on the night beat at 10.